Um, today, I have to deal with a certain amount of technical stuff, but in order for it to make sense, I'm going to give an overview of you know, where I'm going and what I'm doing, and then I've got to explain what all the pieces are. And it's going to take me longer than I thought to explain all the pieces, I think. So, oh, and the first thing, too, is that I put up the notes from the previous lecture, and I'll put up these notes and some other references. You know, I've written loads of notes for myself to try to get all this stuff straight, both in terms of notation and other, other uh, things. All right, so um, the first point here is what's Right, so I'm going to give this overview. Um, but in order to define it precisely, I'm going to need certain things, say, from theory of limit mix, limits of mixed hard structures is somewhat technical. And I'm going to go through that in the context of certain local systems over moduli of curves, moduli of elliptic curves, um, so that I can state the definition. I don't think I'll get there today. But um, so uh, the first is that. M11, this is the moduli stack, whoops. Of smooth elliptic curves. And so this is a stack over Z, it's got good reduction at every prime. So this is important for us. Uh, the second thing is that um, so this is the universal elliptic curve. And we need the most basic, essentially, uh, elliptic motive in this case, in this relative case, and that's going to be the local system H, which will be R1F lower star of Q. Suitably interpreted, it'll have Betty incarnations, uh, Q to Ram, which I'll mention briefly, uh, Hodge, El et al. And crystalline, about which I know essentially nothing. But so this is a local system. It's fiber over E. The fiber over the moduli point of E is just H1 of EQ. And so um, we have. So one way to think of M11, if we just think of M11 analytic, well, let me just, in, in, so I'll take D star to denote some puncture disk in whatever theory you're thinking about. There's an inclusion of this into M11, and this would be the Q disk. So Q is a local, um, if you look inside, M11 bar, it has a unique cusp that corresponds to the nodal cubic. That's the unique cusp here. And just think of it as being a neighborhood in whatever theory. And um, right, so it's, it's the upper half plane mod this guy. This is in sort of the Betty type situation or the analytic situation and Q equals e to the 2 pi i tau. And then in the, in the more arithmetic situation, we take it to be uh, this guy here. So, ah, sorry, it's the puncture disk. So I need to, and then we have a tangential base point
which is DDQ, which is an element of the tangent space at, say, the cusp of m bar 1, 1. And this tangent vector is non-zero at every prime. So at all primes p. And so it's essentially, this is corresponding to a, a um, more or less to the Tate curve. And so one thing I'll talk about later today in uh, both the Hodge and also in the Atal situation is that um, we can talk about the fiber of this local system over um, this tangent vector. Maybe here I'll call it, for the time being, I'll call it, say, T over T. So if you calculate this in these various theories, this is going to be Q plus Q of minus 1. So however you interpret these guys here, and it's actually split. It's a direct sum. And the key point here is the key observation is that this is the, uh, well, I'll say this is a mixed Tate motive of a Z. It's a very trivial one in a way, but it's, it is one. So in fact, in this category, there are no extensions of Q by Q of minus 1. So, um, so what does this mean? So in the Hodge situation, um, this is going to be a, a limit mixed Hodge structure. And, it, um, <coughs> and so what does it mean in the Atal situation? Um, it's, it, it's, the, it's the GQ uh, module, um, what's the GQ action on the Tate module of um, the Tate curve, a lot of Tates here, over, so I think it's Q bar. That's an algebraically closed field. So you look at the Tate curve over this, and you compute the Galois action, and it decomposes in this way. So, ah, and you have to twist it and tensor it with OK. So um, the next thing is that Uh, fundamental groups so we have that um, it's perfectly standard pi 1 of m 1 1 analytic say with this base point this is naturally isomorphic to SL 2 Z And um, say over Q bar is isomorphic to the profinite completion, which is which is definitely bigger than the SL two of the profinite completion of Z. So this this is profinite completion. And so I wrote these down because we're interested in um, local systems. So, 
So here's the, uh, the approximate definition. of uh, a universal mixed elliptic motive. So it's a, uh, so a universal mixed elliptic motive, say over z, I mean you can put lots of adjectives in here which I'll omit, uh, is a motivic local system V over M11. So here, partly be, because of ignorance and partly, I think, because of lack of uh, technology, is these are going to be compatible realizations. So variations of mixed hot structure, Lee sheaves and so on that have various properties uh, satisfying one is that um, each so such a motivic local system will come with a weight filtration so each grade each weight graded quotient is a direct sum of these simple uh, elliptic motives, sum of local systems of the form symmetric powers of H twisted by R. And just in case there's any confusion, it's SNH tensored with Q of R. So I do the, take the symmetric power, then the twist. And um, two, the fiber of um, V, the fiber, which maybe I'll just call with a plane V, of V over T. So this is going to be, in the realizations, this will be some sort of limit mixed hot structure or in the Atal situation, you will, you, you will restrict to this guy up here, wherever I put it, up there, um, is an object of MTM. And when I write MTM, I really mean mixtate motives over spec Z. So by this I mean, so these are going to be variations of hard mixed hard structure and so on. And here I mean that there is a mixed Tate motive and the fiber of the variation of mixed hard structure will be the Hodge realization of the mixed Tate motive and so on. Um, same with the l story, story. The, the fiber of the Lee sheaf over T will be the l realization of the mixed Tate motive. Okay, but in order for this to be comprehensible, I have to talk about variations of mixed hard structure and so on, and I have to talk, get into a little bit about moduli of elliptic curves. So that's what I'm going to do today, just explain what all the words mean. So... Can I ask a quick question? Is the V lives over M11 or M11 bar? Well, you'll have the local system will lie over M11. I mean, M11 bar is simply connected. So what is it? Uh, what does it mean to take a fiber of this? Well, I understand the low realizations, but well, for example, um, because t hat is you said t hat is okay. a potential vector at the k curve, right? One one goal today is to explain that, but the but the point is simply this: that um, the local systems themselves don't extend, but you look at the corresponding flat vector bundles they will extend and you'll get a connection with a logarithmic singularity. And then you have to define the limit mixed hard structure and that I'll do in detail. In the Atal situation, you, you have a map of the punctured disk, say, z, well, so you have a map of the punctured disk into M11. And so, uh, and then if I take, 
the, what's the sort of geometric point that lies above this? It's going to be q bar, and then I guess we have to take roots of this. You have to, um, right, so this is, this is then a geometric point of this guy, and it'll be the fiber over that. So, in fact, that's, that's, this, is, this is actually T. All right, so let's... Um, Yeah, but I'm going to explain. I would. I'm going to explain the hard story, not maybe in excruciating detail. I don't know. It's not going to be excruciating. I hope. But um, but there's some really important point here because you might say, see, this local system H doesn't look very tight, you know. But when it degenerates, it becomes tight, as I explained there before. And it's the same thing with the mixed hard structure. And what gets confusing here is or what's potentially confusing is that there are two weight filtrations. There's one coming from the monodromy and there's one coming from this global local system. All right, so let's, the best thing to do is just get on with it. So um, I think I've already messed up my numbering. Uh, moduli of elliptic curves. So I realize a lot of this is well known, but I'm going to repeat some of it because, first of all, just to establish notation, and then we need to be, it's going to help us because we're going to need to do certain calculations. So the first thing is, I, this is a notation I like and I'm trying to propagate, is that this, this is equal to the moduli stack of uh, smooth projective curves of genus G. With, um, yeah, so everywhere here, 2G minus 2 plus R plus N is positive. So with N marked points, And I should stress they're labeled. So it's an ordered set of endpoints. And R non-zero uh, tangent vectors. And all the, the anchor points of the tangent vectors have to be distinct and distinct from the other points. So a curve like this might look like um, And now here we might put our n mark points x1, x2 up to say xn. And then here we might have these tangent vectors, say v1, you know, v2 up to vr. Uh, right. Whoops. Yeah, all of these guys have to be anchored at different points. And each of these, and they have to be, these points are all distinct, and these points are distinct, and distinct from these. So for example, if you forgot the tangent vector, you, you could turn a tangent vector into another point. So you, maybe I should say, okay, there are points, say, y1, yr here, and y1 to yr, x1 to xn, are n plus r distinct points. And if you're a topologist, and we'll, we'll discuss this later, if you took the real oriented blow up at each of these points, you would get a surface with boundary. So this is the algebraic way of doing um, boundary components that topologists like.
So actually, I denote the moduli point of such a curve by, I'd write it as something like C x1 xn v1 vr. All right, so we're interested in, so what we need for the current situation is uh, M11, and here a typical point is it's a genus one curve and a point, so that's an elliptic curve, but we'll always understand that's an elliptic curve, so I'll just write E, right? And so, uh, and one, a nice moduli space that's good to work with, it's in fact a scheme, is m1 vector 1. So this is going to be E and then a vector. And this vector will, will be in the tangent space of 0 of E. So this uh, topological picture, it's a non-zero tangent vector at the identity. And then m1, 2 is, these are the only three we'll need. It's, it's E 0, x. So x is not equal to 0. So it's an elliptic curve together with an additional non-zero point. All right, so let's look at these as, first of all, as analytic orbifolds. Um, So let's take H to be the upper half plane. Right, so it's just it's the, the tau in C such that M tau is positive. And so I like to think of this as the moduli space of framed elliptic curves. Right, so when, whenever you solve a moduli problem, or at least the ones I've solved, you sort of rigidify the problem. And if you're doing it analytically, what you can do is you, um, so what do I mean by this? This is an elliptic curve, so a smooth elliptic curve, together with, and I, apologize for the abuse of notation, sort of A, B, where this here is a basis. It's a symplectic basis. Of H1 of E with Z coefficients. And so um, why is this the case? Well, if you have, so, if you have such an elliptic curve with a, a framing of H1, you can, it corresponds to, well, it gives you a point in the upper half plane. Namely, you just take tau to be the integral of omega over B divided by the integral of omega over A, where omega is not equal to zero, it's just a holomorphic, it's just a non-zero abelian differential. And if you go the other way, if you have a tau in the upper half plane, um, you just take it up to the curve I like to call E tau, and you take the differential dz. Uh, well, sorry, you take the basis 1 tau. So let me explain this. So the notation is um, that I'll set lambda tau equal to, if this notation is too heavy, just yell out, and I'll, I'll always write this. Um, and e tau will just be c mod lambda tau, so it's just the obvious elliptic curve you get out of tau, and the basis here, so h1 of e tau is naturally isomorphic to lambda tau, and this has basis uh, 1 and tau. Right, that's our basis a and b. So, uh, 
So SL2Z acts on this. We all know that it acts on the upper half plane, and it just acts on the natural way on the framing. So, um, so we have that SL2Z, it acts on H, and, uh, well, the usual action is tau goes to A tau plus B over C tau plus D, but you can also think of it as taking, you can also think of it as taking elliptic curve with the framing AB. Maybe I'll write the framing this way, BA, and it takes it to the elliptic curve with the framing ABCD, BA. <clears throat> and then uh, M1, 1 analytic, well, what's an elliptic curve? It's just a framed elliptic curve where you forget the framing. The orbits, any two framings differ by SL2Z, so it's going to be the quotient of the upper half plane by SL2Z, but I'm going to take the orbifold quotient. And so, very briefly, what's the orbifold quotient of the upper half plane? It means you just work on the upper half plane, but everything has an action of SL2Z, and you act SL2Z equivariantly. So it's just a fancy way of saying work here, but work SL2Z equivariantly. And a good example of what that's like is just the theory of classical modular forms. All right, so let's look at, um, actually it's becoming one of my favorite moduli spaces, Let's look at M1 vector 1 analytic. And first of all, a dumb remark. Is that if you have an elliptic curve and you have a tangent vector, this, this, is, this corresponds exactly to an elliptic curve and an omega where omega is a non-zero holomorphic differential on E. And why? Because the tangent bundle is trivial. So um, you just take it to be, right? If you've got such a differential, there's a unique tangent vector which pairs to one with your holomorphic differential. Right? So this is the same as elliptic curves plus the holomorphic differential. But I want to often think of it this way. Um, all right, so now um, one way to, there's various ways to do this, but let's take C star across H, and I'm going to take it into framed elliptic curves. Um, plus a non-zero abelian differential. Right. And so how am I going to do this? I'm going to take C tau. I'm going to take it to E tau. That's the elliptic curve associated with tau. And then the, base, the framing of my lattice is 1 tau. That's no surprise. And then I just, which, which differential do I take? I just take C times dz. So z is the coordinate in the universal cover of E tau. And you can check here that um, you can think about how SL2Z acts, and AB, so SL2Z acts, and it will take e, e tau to E gamma of tau, but that's the same elliptic curve, and then you have to compare the differentials, and then you see that it, it takes uh, uh, ABCD, takes C tau into C tau plus D, C, mm -hmm. 
Oops, I'm missing it. Yeah, it looks like I left something out here, but that's okay. So now, um, And so um, what we have is that uh, this induces a map from SL2Z, C star cross H, and it will induce a, an isomorphism with M1 vector 1 analytic. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Sorry? You did, you did not yet, so. No, I haven't. I could. Um, I'm not going to. I'll explain the compactification when I do the algebraic case. But you can hear, maybe I'll say briefly, what's uh, M11 bar. You've got to glue two orbifolds together, and you've got to be a bit careful. But it's, equal, it's essentially, I like this picture here, uh, we'll take. Um, so SL2Z, the quotient of the upper half plane by it. Up here, I'll put uh, this one and just the quotient of the upper half plane by it. And this maps down into here. Um, and so this is just the punctured disk, the punctured Q disk. And then here, I want to map it down into the group, which I'll call plus or minus 1, Z, 0, 1. And then I take the quotient of the upper half plane by it. And this is the same as taking a cyclic group of order 2 and dividing this by it. But that's the trivial C2 action. Right? So that's as, a, as an analytic orbifold, M11 bar is, this, is given by this sort of Maya via torus picture here. So to work on it, you would work SL2Z equivariantly here. You would work equivariantly under this group here. And then they have to match up on this here. So let me say something about fundamental groups. Uh, so if you have, um, so if X is simply connected space, and gamma is a discrete group, uh, you can define the orbifold quotient. And pi 1 of the orbifold quotient, uh, and I'll say what p is in a second, this is naturally isomorphic to gamma. So here, what's p? p is the projection from x into gamma mod x. It's just the projection. So in ordinary topology, you can use any simply connected space as a base point. Right? And so in particular, you can use the universal cover. So if this was fixed point free, properly discontinuous action, um, then the, the fundamental group of a space with respect to the universal covering is just the group of deck transformations. And this is just an orbifold version of that. No, you could, for example, you can take this to be a point. I mean, I mean, you can be fancy and take x cross e gamma over gamma, right? So, um, and then what about, so this tells us that pi 1 of m11 with respect to this project analytic is naturally isomorphic to SL2z. And and pi 1 of m1 vector 1, I'll, I'll put this maps to SL2z. 
And if you think about it, we, we didn't take the quotient of a simply connected space, but you get pi 1 of c star, so you actually get a copy of z here. Or if you want to be really fancy, a copy of z of 1. So, um, and this group here, you can think of it lots of ways. One way, this guy here is the braid group on three strings. On three strings. It's also the inverse image of SL2Z inside the universal covering group of SL2R. It's also the fundamental group of the trefoil knot. So it's a nice group. And this is, this is a central extension. All right, so let's... Um, Maybe I'll start here. So let's now think about them as algebraic. Uh, so I'm going to assume 6 is invertible. So if 6 is invertible in a ring, so this is a commutative ring, um, then every elliptic curve over R uh, is, can be written in the form y squared equals 4x cubed minus ux minus v. So, so this is in, you can find this in katz mazur there might be some assumption on R, but it's certainly true if R is Z. Sorry, Z with 6 inverted. And so, and the identity, of course, is the identity is, is 0, 1, 0, if we write it in projective coordinates. It's the point at infinity. And so, um, what you can conclude from this is that This gives us that M11 over R is isomorphic to A2R minus, and you have to remove uh, D inverse of 0, where D is the discriminant up to a factor of 4. So D is equal to U cubed minus 27 V squared. It's, it's essentially the discriminant. It's either four times or one fourth the discriminant. Uh, I, th I think it's one fourth the discriminant. And so, no, this is a scheme. And so, uh, and maybe I should say, what does UV correspond to? UV corresponds to the elliptic curve. Um, maybe I'll call this one EUV, which is y squared equals 4x cubed minus ux minus v plus the differential dx over y. So that's an abelian differential. And then um, what is m, what's m11? It's over r. It's equal to the quotient of gm, the quotient of this by And I have to tell you how GM acts. It acts by multiplying this guy here by T. But this looks slightly strange. Um, but you've got, it doesn't look as strange when you realize that this same curve is isomorphic to this with the negative of this differential, because every elliptic curve has the involution that takes a point to its inverse. So what's the GM action? So lambda would take UV, and it takes it to lambda to the minus 4u, lambda to the minus 6 times v. And this is exactly the action that multiplies this guy by lambda. And here I mean stack quotient.
And what does this mean? It says, well, if you want to work on here, you can work GM equivariantly up here. And again, if we want to talk about M11 bar, what's, what's M11 bar? It's equal to A2 over R. It's the quotient by the same GM action of A to R just minus zero. All the points on D equals zero are just the nodal cubic, but with different differentials. Right, but viewed as a stack and not as a variety. Okay. I mean, this is, it's the usual M11, it's just, um, and then also note that minus one acts trivially on everything, right? Because if you multiply the differential by minus one, you get an isomorphic curve. Right, so everything has inertia. And so, and then this is an exercise. It's in some of the notes I put up on the web. I mean, you can hunt through some of this, but what's the universal elliptic curve? You can uh, think of this as it's um, M1, 2 plus 1. This looks bizarre, but this is, you just write down the equation. Um, you know, the coordinates are going to be x, y, u, v, and so on, um, modulo gm. So it's an elliptic curve with two points and a tangent vector, and then you, so this will be a, a scheme, and then you just, um, the gm action multiplies the abelian differential. Sorry? Yes, that's the universal curve. So this will be the universal curve over M11. You delete the zero section. The point, the second point is not zero. Ah, hold, did I? Ah, yes, sorry. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, so this is actually, uh, this is actually M12, and that's equal to what I like to call E prime. E prime is equal to E minus the zero section. Thank you. Right. But you can also write down the universal elliptic curve this way. And it's in somewhere in the notes. Um, all right, so to compare... So to compare the algebraic and analytic, what we need are Eisenstein and related functions, so Eisenstein series. And I'll just, one reason for writing this down is I want to give them the normalization I use. Uh, so for me, G2K tau is equal to 1 over 2 And I'll take, I'll take k to be greater than or equal to 2, 
But if we work on m1 vector 1, then we need to k equals 1 as well. We need g2. And um, this, is, this is the normalized guy. So it's minus b 4k divided by 4k plus uh, the sum n equals 1 to infinity sigma 2k minus 1 n q to the n. Q as always is e to the 2 pi i tau. And this is the divisor function here. So this guy's normalized. Yeah, I th that's what I wrote in. So, yeah. And it's a modular form. Of weight two uh, k, and so um, then the Weierstrass p function. So uh, p tau z, so it's the usual formula. But let me write it like this. It's 2 pi i squared. I like to isolate out all of these because of all the Tate twists and so on. Um, and then 1 over 2 pi i z squared. So I, I guess what I'm saying here, a better variable here would be 2 pi i z instead of z um, plus the sum m equals 1 to infinity 2 over 2m factorial g2m plus 2 of, uh, of tau times 2 pi i z to the 2m. This is just the usual formula. It's just the, it's 1 over z squared plus the sum prime uh, 1 over z minus lambda squared. It's just the usual formula. But um, And then, again, I'm writing these down just because I want to have the normalizations. G2 tau is equal to 20 G4 tau. And G3 tau is equal to 7 G6 over 3. And So why am I doing all this? So what's the significance? The significance is you can embed E tau into P2 and the way I'm going to do it is slightly non-standard. It's I want to put 2 pi i to the minus 2 times p tau of z, uh, 2 pi i to the minus 3 times p prime tau of z, 1. Th this is what you need to do to make the Q theory come out correct, the Q Durham theory. And so the image is the elliptic curve y squared equals 4x cubed minus g2 tau x minus g3 tau. And the discriminant up to a factor of 4 is um, it's just the cusp form.
equals you know q times the product. So it's the cusp form of weight 12. And the important point here is that the differential here is uh, dx over y, the abelian differential, is equal to 2 pi i times dz. And maybe I, that's why I put all these factors of 2 pi in here. And why did I do that? It's because when we degenerate this class to the nodal cubic, the nodal cubic is um, basically P1 with zero and infinity glued, you know, and the identity at one. What does this differential become on the nodal cubic? If we choose a coordinate here, which is, you know, zero and infinity at these two points and one here, this degenerates to dW over W, which is a Q de Ram form. If I didn't put the 2 pi i in there, it'd be 1 over 2 pi i. You can see this just by seeing what happens to the period over A. Because right? dz has period 1 over the A curve. The A curve here goes to the loop around 0. And um, right, and so uh, right, so we want to we want to map from the analytic picture to the algebraic picture. And so this is a map into C2 minus D inverse of 0. So this is equal to. And uh, you just take C tau goes to C to the minus 2 G2 tau C to the minus 4 G3 tau. And this induces an isomorphism from, this gives you a map from M11 analytic. Maybe, maybe I should have, better here, I should have written this. This induces a map from, so this is how you compare the complex picture here with the analytic picture. <clears throat> All right, so now, um, that's probably more than enough on moduli. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the local system. So remember what we have here. We have the universal elliptic curve over M11, and H is in R1 F lower star of Q with suitably interpreted in whichever theory. So um, on topics M11 analytic uh, with the vector. Sorry, there's a vector. Uh, this side, yes, correct. Yeah, that should be a vector there. Yeah, because yeah, because the quotient of this by SL2Z is this. This has weight minus two. This has sorry. This has weight minus four. This has weight four. So this is a map. This map is SL2Z equivariant, where there's a trivial action on this side. Mm -hmm. All right. So Betty. So let's just go through all the realization. So. We'll discuss all the realizations separately. So uh, Betty is the most trivial. It's just topological local system. And we've more or less already discussed it. So um, uh, except I'm going to play a little game here with Poincare duality. So um, the fiber over E is H1 of EQ. But that's equal to harm. H1 E into Q. Maybe I'll stress that's hum H1 of E. And now we know we have, so we're going to, if we work on the upper half plane, so we're going we're gonna to lift H to the upper half plane. And so then we can talk about the fiber over a particular elliptic curve. So let's look at 
we've got E A B. This guy here is a point in the upper half plane because this was framed elliptic curves. And so let's take, let's let A dual, B dual is a dual basis of H1 of E. It's a basis of H1 dual to these guys, but this guy here is isomorphic to H lower one of E by Poincaré duality. So under Poincaré duality, um, A dual is equal to minus B, and uh, B dual is equal to A. So in Betty, there's no difference. In the other theories, there's going to be a Tate twist, but I'll still use this basis. So I'm, um, so what's the SL2Z action? So, um, so we have H here. So what I want to think here, and we have, we have H over it. It's a local system. It's a trivial local system. Um, and H is really just equal to, say, Q times A check plus Q times B check, but that's the same as Q times A by Poincaré duality plus Q times B. <clears throat> so I'm going to think of it this way, but I'm thinking of it as cohomology. And so what's the SL2Z action? So SL2Z is going to act on everything inside. So to, the local system downstairs is just a local system upstairs with an SL2Z action. And uh, so A, B, C, D takes uh, this, this is a little exercise, A minus B into A minus B, A, B, C, D. So it's acting on the right of frame, so it's acting on the left of the bundle. Right? So it's and so, like I said here, the quotient is the local system H over M11 analytic. So that's the simplest case. <coughs> so SF2Z acts on this H, but then you take the quotient to be again H. <laughs> right, so what, what does it mean to have a local? See, this guy here is a space. We know it's the J line. It's simply connected. So local systems there would be boring. So what is it? One way to think of it is it's a local system on it's a, a orbifold universal covering together with an action of SL2Z. But you say quotient is ambiguous. Well, orbifold quotient. So, um, yeah, when I say quotient, I'm always going to mean stack quotient or orbifold quotient. But when, when we're on M1 vector 1, it's going to be OK because that's a genuine variety or scheme. So what about Hodge? Well, that's just the same, but with more information. So this is going to be a variation of Hodge structure. And this is um, the Hodge realization of H is the most canonical example of a variation of Hodge structure on the planet. It's so canonical, it's atypical. <laughs> in the sense that it's in Wilfred Smith's work on variations of Hodge structure, this thing called an SL2 orbit. And this is the most uh, fundamental SL2 orbit. So, um, so again, we, we want to talk about the vector bundle associated to H. So this is going to be H tensed with O. And I'll always be vague about O. If we're on the upper half plane, it'll be O of the upper half plane and so on. So this is, um, this is the associated flat vector. 
polymorphic vector bundle. Actually, we can take a little break here if you want. Pause cafe. All right, so we're about to do the Hodge story. So this, this bundle has a uh, connection and uh, so a canonical flat connection. So sections of the local system are have derivative zero. So this says that nabla A and nabla B are equal to zero. And so we want to to write down the Hodge story, we need to write down the Hodge filtration. And from this we'll extract some features. So we need so first of all, I should say, if we look at H1 of E, this is equal to F0. This contains F1, which is equal to C times, say, the abelian differential. So, and this contains F2 equals 0. So the only thing to describe is F1. So we, we need to describe F0 of H, and this is a dumb little this is a dumb little calculation. So on E tau, that's quotient of C by the lattice associated with tau, dz, so you just draw the usual picture here. Here is A, here is B, here's 1, here's tau. So you just look at this and dz is equal to uh, A dual plus tau b dual. But we're using Poincare duality, so a dual was minus b plus tau a. And so, um, and so I'm going to let w, bold w, uh, be the section of h. Um, the t so we'll just take the value of it, uh, w at tau is going to be this, it's going to be 2 pi i times this guy here, minus b plus tau a. So this is, again, the reason for this 2 pi i is so that it's a q rational section of this bundle. This bundle will be defined over q. Ah, and maybe I can even write that as I can write it as uh, minus 2 pi i b plus log q times a. Because e to the 2 pi i tau is, log, is q, so just take logarithms. And so let's look at the derivative of w. It's equal to um, a dq over q. Q. So this is a dumb calculation, but this is somehow fundamental. This is this derivation arises here, and so um, what's a formula for the connection? So um, will you, so if we use the framing, so write uh, H. We can, instead of using the framing A and B, we're going to use the framing A and W. So this is over H. And there's several reasons for doing this. It will become apparent in a minute. But one is that this is adapted to the Hodge filtration. So this is going to be our, this is F1 of H. And you can see it varies holomorphically because this W is a holomorphic linear combination of A and B. So this is a holomorphic subbundle. So this is a, in, in fancy Hodge theory, this is always true. If you have a family of varieties and you look at the corresponding local system of cohomology, the Hodge bundles vary holomorphically. And here it's just, we've just written it down. It's trivial to do by hand. And, um, so we're also interested in the local system SNH. And so here, SNH tensor O is isomorphic to SN of H. 
Ah, and, sorry, I forgot to write down the connection here. So with respect to this trivialization, the connection is D plus um, ADDW times DQ over Q. So this is a formula for the connection on this bundle. And here, it's just linear algebra to get from this situation to here, but it's worth writing down. Um, here, the Hodge filtration's longer. We're going to have SNH will be equal to F0, will contain F1, will contain all the way down to F, uh, maybe I'll write FP, down to FN. And this will be spanned by uh, A to the N minus P, W to the P, and so on. This will be spanned by W to the N. When I say that, I mean you take all monomials of degree greater than or equal to P and W. Uh, and so these all vary holomorphically, and the connection is given by the same formula. S means symmetric power? Yeah, S means symmetric power. So these are going to be our basic, these and their Tate twists will be our basic simple elliptic motives. And we're going to be interested in extensions of these in various categories like the category of variations of mixed Hodge structure. And so there's an important, uh, so there are some important observations here. The first is um, that the connection takes, if you have a section of FP of SNH, you get a section of FP minus 1 SNH tensored with omega 1. And I'm going to write M11 bar log of the cusp. So this, these are forms with a logarithmic pole at the cusp, and you see the connection has a singularity. And this is called, this is, if, if I put, so this is one of the standard axioms of a variation of Hodge structure. And it's called Griffith's transversality. And again, it holds in great generality. And we're going to be imposing this condition on the variations we have. This is a condition that you get in variations of Hodge structure and mixed Hodge structure. Um, another is that the intersection form is flat. Form. So the intersection form is, you know, AA equals BB equals zero and A b equals 1 equals minus ba. So this is a flat inner product, and it satisfies the Riemann bilinear relations. It is flat with respect to the connection, and satisfies, I won't write them out, the Riemann bilinear relations. And so this is called a polarization. So I'm not going to dwell on this, except I'm going to use um, the word polarized variation of hot structure. And in reality, people often drop, sometimes drop the term polarize, polarization, but it plays a key technical role. Without it, a lot of the results don't hold. And so it, this is also polarizes the S, N, H. So they're all polarized. They've all got an invariant bilinear form. And they all automatically satisfy the Riemann bilinear relations. So what this says uh, is that uh, S, N, H, S, N, H with its connection and We're, it's Hodge filtration, and also this guy here is a polarized variation of Hodge structure. Mm. 
or PVHS if you're a professional. <laughs> and, and basically, the, the axioms of what a polarized variation of Hodge structure are just generalize these. And we won't need any other polarized variations of Hodge structure other than these guys here. And, um, and it's actually of weight n. Because every fiber of this local system with the ho induced Hodge filtration is a Hodge structure of weight n. So, so it's a whole family of Hodge structures that move holomorphically and, um, and they don't move too fast. That's what Griffith's transversality says. You can't. <clears throat> I guess this is slow food movement in the US, right? This is, there's slow variations here. The derivative's not too big. So let me quickly say something about the, the Aladdin case. So, um, yeah, I, I'm going to take a quick and dirty route here, but so E is elliptic over, over Q, say, and um, this gives you a point in M11Q. And so we get an exact sequence of fundamental groups. We'll get pi 1 of M11 over Q bar, that's the geometric fundamental group here. I'm going to call this point E. This will map to pi 1 of M11 over Q. This is the arithmetic fundamental group, and this will map to GQ, the Galois group of Q bar over Q. The elliptic curve gives you a section, because this is pi 1 of spec Q. And you get a map back in here, and the way I've set it up, it's base point preserving. So this is induced by the elliptic curve E. <coughs> and so this tells you that this group here is just isomorphic to GQ, semi-direct product, pi 1 of M11 over Q bar E. And this, this group here is also isomorphic to the usual fundamental group, profinitely completed. And now, what's, what's a, an elliptic local system here? It will be a representation of this group. And what representation will it be? So the middle group here, um, pi 1 of m11 over q. E, it acts on um, H1 of E over Q bar, right. right? So we can think of this as just harm of pi 1 of E over Q bar. So we described this last time into Q L of minus 1. Right. And so you can think of it as an action of the semi-direct product. How does this part act? How's the geometric part act? Well, it just acts on this guy here. right? That's just the fundamental representation of SL2Z. And then you have to have, um, but also the Galois group acts on uh, this guy as well. So it acts on this. And together, they give you an action of the semi-direct product. Well, you can also do it by looking at a tile covers here coming from the L to the N torsion points of the universal elliptic curve. Right? But anyway, this is just to give um, an idea. So anyway, so there's this elliptic, you know, leaf sheaf. And then let me say something briefly about the Q-Durham theory. At first, I was going to leave it out, um, but it turns out to be very useful for the same reason in the, uh, the mixed Tate case is that it gives you a very good fiber functor. It's the best fiber functor for mixed elliptic motives. 
And um, and so I'll briefly sketch this here. So I'm going to do it over m1 vector 1. And I'm going to write down a, G in, a, a GM invariant uh, connection. And then therefore, it will give me a Q to Ram story on m11. Right? So we're going to look at m1 vector 1. Uh, so we're going to trivialize h over uh, this guy here over q. And how are we going to do that? So remember, this is going to be a2q minus d inverse of 0. And we're going to have two sections. I'll call them s and t. And so what are their values? So their values over uv, so this is a point in here. Um, so the value of, so uv, which corresponds to the elliptic curve y squared equals 4x cubed minus ux minus v. And so um, the value of t at uv is just going to be dx over y. This is clearly a q-rational section. And s of uv is going to be the differential of the second kind, x dx over y. And, and it also, if you want to write, so this is actually dz. Sorry, this is going to be, the way I set it up, this is 2 pi i dz. And um, this guy here is going to be 1 over 2 pi i p of tau z dz. So this is a differential of the second kind. And it's q-rational. And, um, and these guys, you can calculate their cup product is 2 pi i times the fundamental class. So they're linearly independent on every fiber. They're both defined over q. And so this tells us that h is equal to O of m1 vector 1 times s plus O of m1 1 t. Right? And now um, the, the, the fact is that and it's not hard to prove. It's an exercise is that with respect to this trivialization, the connection is d plus uh, minus 1 twelfth dd over d tensor t plus 3 alpha over 2d. I mean, the, the exact thing is not which is visible. Oh, I have to tell you what alpha is. So where alpha is equal to um, 2u dv minus 3v du, and d is always is equal to u cubed minus 27v squared. Right, so this is clearly defined over q. And if you, uh, not only that, it's also uh, it's GM invariant. I wrote up, I won't write it down, I wrote up the weights of everything under the GM action. <laughs> but just to get, I set it up so the GM action mu multiplies, lambda multiplies this by lambda, and it'll multiply this by 1 over lambda, and you just look at everything else. I think u, u had weight minus 4, and V had weight minus 6, and so on, and you just uh, work it all out. So it's GM invariant, so it descends. To 
uh, a connection, a Q rational connection on M11 over Q. All right, so that, I mean, this is sort of the end of the setup. And you can find a proof of this. It's, it's sort of a, it's not hard, it's just an exercise. But I, I have these notes on the elliptic KZB equation. In the last section there, I worked this out together with what I really wanted, which is another Q rational connection. Anyway. So, uh, oh yes, yeah, sorry, there's a, a, a tensor S missing right here. Right there. Anyway, it's in the notes which I'll put on the web later today. Up there. So let me mention a little history. So um, in the abstract, Wilfred Schmidt, sometime about 76, proved that if you have any polarized variation of Hodge structure, it has a limit mixed Hodge structure. He didn't even assume it came from geometry. And then Steen, sorry? Wilfred Schmidt. And so then, and it's a beautiful piece of work. And then. Uh, Steenbrink proved the thing if you, in the case of geometric origin, although there was a gap, it's, it's correct, but there was a gap and various people fixed the gap, but ultimately I think it's by Saito. But so in the geometric case though, you can explicitly write it down. And in this case, we can just do it because things are so simple. So I'm going to do it, but I, um, that's why I didn't put limits of Hodge structures in the definition of a polarized variation. It's automatic by the work of Schmidt. In the case of mixed hard structures, you have to talk about the limits. So I'm going to talk about limits of hard structures, then limits of mixed hard structures. And then you'll be probably ready for lunch. <laughs> All right, so, um, and I'm just going to do this in the context of H and its symmetric powers. All right, so let's, so the question is, what's, so what's, what's the issue here? We've got D star is sitting inside M11. And you can think of this, you know, we're going to think about this analytically, right? So this is really the upper half plane mod 1z01 including to SL2z. And so this is the punctured Q disk. And we want to know what happens at um, when we get in. So the first thing is we want to understand the behavior of this local system on D star. So I said a little while ago that I was going to explain why we switched the framing from A and B to A and W. So let's check the monodromy here. So what's the monodromy in the Q disk? Yeah, local variable is Q. So just to be very clear, Q is equal to e to the 2 pi I tau. And so what happens here, we can just see, as you go, if you're in the Q disk, here you are, you go around from some point, you go around like this. Um, so this is D star. But what's happening in the upper half plane here is that some tau here is going to tau plus 1. And so if here's 0 here. Here's my, say, 1. So this will be, oh, we do have colors. OK. OK, so we've got, we've got here is A, and here is B. And now what happens when you go around the disk is that B goes to this one, which is A plus B. Right? I mean, it's, it's not a surprise. It's, we already wrote down the formula for the action is, is, is you know, BA goes to 1, 1, 0, 1 times BA, which equals A plus B, B. 
right? So we've got this locally unipotent monodromy. <clears throat> and so the first thing to observe is both A and W are invariant. So A goes to A, so note a and W are invariant. So this is one reason we switch to W. B is clearly not invariant, and you can just check it out by writing out the... F in the top, in the bottom there. Sorry? Last, last, last formula. After, A plus B over A. Yeah, uh, yeah, that should be an A, thank you. So A goes to A and B goes to A plus B, and you just see it from this picture here. You said A is invariant, that's what Yeah. And so, and you, I'll leave it as next, I just write down W, or it's also just clear, it's just, there's only one abelian differential, and it's determined by its period on A. So it, it, um, it's invariant, because W takes the, always takes 2 pi I on A. So what's this saying? It's saying that, um, so H on D star, is just equal to O of D star A plus O of D star W. So if you have a bundle that's trivial on a puncture disk and you have a framing of it, it gives you an extension to the entire disk. So we're going to extend to H bar over D. We're going to extend it, so this is just going to be equal to O of D A plus O of d w. So note, there are many ways to extend because I could instead, I could have used the framing some power of q times a and some power of q times w. But there's one, there's a canonical choice and Deline was the one I guess who realized this. It, um, so when you extend the connection, so when you extend the bundle, you're going to get a meromorphic connection. So let's calculate what it is. And I should say, Similarly, for S, N, N, H, it extends just as the nth symmetric power of this guy. Okay, so what it, and so we already know the formula for the connection. In both cases, nabla is equal to D plus A, D, D, W, D, Q over Q. So what do we notice about this? This is, um, what's the residue at zero of nabla? It's equal to this endomorphism. Yeah, it's equal, it's equal to this endomorphism, which is A D D W. And you should think of this as um, an element of the endomorphisms of the fiber over zero. So I, I'm just gonna call that H. This is the fiber over zero. or I could put um, of H bar. So s different people think of limit mixed hot structures in different ways. I think of the limit mixed hot structure as living on the central fiber of this extension. So this is related to Deepam's question. Okay, so, um, and it's a nilpotent. And this, 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 equation has a regular singular point because the pole is just a simple pole. So these two conditions alone uniquely determine this extension abstractly. It's just the fact that the connection extends to a meromorphic connection with a simple pole and nilpotent residue. And that's called Deline's canonical extension. Okay, so the next point is that, so what we had, we started out with basically H over D star. 
this gave, gave us h over d star with a connection. Then we extended that to h bar with a, with a meromorphic connection over d, all of the diff. Now, this guy here has a Hodge filtration by holomorphic subbundles. Maybe to make it more interesting, I can put an Sn here. Now, we, well, the next thing is that we observe that the Hodge bundles extend through subbundles. This is why it's important we take the correct extension. If we take the wrong one, they won't be subbundles. So, observe that the Fp of H over, say, D star extend to holomorphic subbundles of S n H bar. You, just the same way. You just give, basically, you give W type 1, 0 and A type, well, all you have to do is, yeah. so Fp, I'll just write it down, of H bar is equal to the sum of O of D times A to the n minus j, w to the j, where j is greater than or equal to p. It's visibly a subbundle. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, thank you. It's fp of sn. All right, so this is a subbundle. And so this was, in the abstract case, this is what Schmidt's nilpotent orbit theorem says. It says the Hodge bundles extend to holomorphic subbundles of the canonical extension. So what's the limit mixed Hodge structure? So, um, so what have we got so far? So what have we got so far? So, so far, we've, we've got SNH, so E equals the fiber of SNH bar over zero. So somehow that's, to me, that's where the limit mixed Hodge structure should live, <laughs> right there. And we also have a Hodge filtration. We have the the l <laughs> it's just it's just um, f p of h is just defined to be uh, f p of s sorry f p of s n h. Fp of S n h, it's just the fiber at zero, right? You just, the, the extended, the fact that the Hodge bundles extend means it cuts out a Hodge filtration on the central fiber. So um, you might get optimistic and think that, well, this would define a Hodge structure. So we're missing two things. One, a Q structure. This is where the tangent vector is going to come in. And two, we're missing a weight filtration. So let's, so I'll deal with these now. This one's tight. All right, so um, so let's just set let's just set n equal to a d d w, and this guy is an endomorphism of S n h. It's an endomorphism of h, and therefore an endomorphism of this. So it's a nilpotent endomorphism, and so a little proposition here is that. Um, 
if n is a nilpotent endomorphism of some vector space V in characteristic zero, then there is a unique filtration. And I'll call it WN dot of V such that one N of W N say K is contained in W N K minus two. So this filtration is going to be called the weight filtration of N. And the first property is that N lowers it by two. And the second property is that um, if you look at, say, N to the K, it, it's going to take uh, graded the, it's going to take it, uh, You'll certainly get a map here for every k, and you ask that this be an isomorphism. And so this thing is centered at 0. And let me give you a very quick, I'm not going to prove it, but I'm going to just, once you see the idea, it's trivial. So the proof is, uh, the first thing is, without loss of generality, I don't know what the French equivalent is without loss of generality. It's the same, OK. Uh, N is a Jordan block. So it's going to look like zeros and then just ones. And, and two, just write it down. So you've got a basis here. And for a single Jordan block, you'll only get non-trivial graded quotients either in odd or even parity, depending on the degree of nil potence. But you just, you just write it down. So and once you've got its existence, the uniqueness is easy. And you can write it down in terms of kernels of powers and so on. All right, so now. Purely algebraic, it doesn't. Depends on the particular choice of. Uh, yeah, this is just undergraduate linear algebra. SNA tubes do everything as polynomial in A and W. Sorry? You see everything as polynomial in A and W. Yes, I'm seeing everything as polynomial. Yeah, because B does not extend. Or not in any obvious way. So. Um, A and W extend over B. Yeah, that's right. And now, um, so what we're going to do here is, so we have um, A, A, D, D, W, and now we want to get it, so this is going to, which takes S, N, H into itself. So this gives us a weight filtration, which we'll call W, you know, A, D, D, W. But we want to do one other thing. This guy's centered at 0. We want to shift it so it's centered at the weight of the variation. And I want to, once John Conway gave a lecture in Duke, in the middle of the lecture, he just, you know, a big guy, he just dived onto a table in front of the room. But he just did it to get people's attention. So the best I can do is to hop, OK? But we're going to shift. So this, this guy is centered at weight 0, right? That's what it is. It's symmetric about 0. And we're going to shift it, shift, to get, uh, and I, you know, you put some square bracket with something, so that it's centered at uh, n, which is equal to the Hodge weight of SNH. It also happens to be the SL2 weight, but it's the Hodge weight. It's the weight of the variation. Mm -hmm. So now what you have is you're going to see that 
a d d w to the k is going to go from g r n n plus k of s n h and it's going to go isomorphically into g r m n minus k s n h so it's now symmetric about the hodge weight and you may say why do that well we'll see in a second what what is capital n Okay. Uh, this is the new, so I'm going to use M and I'm using it, this is a, so last week I, I called one weight filtration M and this is it. It's, and, and I use M because it's the monodromy, I guess I called the other one, yeah, it's the monodromy weight filtration. So we have locally unipotent monodromy, if you take its logarithm it's in fact this this operator here and now it gives us a weight filtration and we get a we get a weight filtration and so the uh, proposition so sort of doing things differently from the notes here so um, so what we've done now is we have we've got a weight filtration to put on the middle fiber so so far we've got We've got a vector space, namely the central fiber of the canonical extension. We have a limit Hodge filtration, which is what we get from the extended Hodge bundles. We've now got a weight filtration. I've got to give it Q structure. And so, so far I haven't used any tangent vector. But this filtration is not the one you hold. This is the Hodge, this is the Hodge filtration. So we have a Hodge filtration, a weight filtration. Now what about the Q structure? And I'll just say, uh, we, we get one, just a preview, for each V in the tangent space at zero of the disk. And, um, there's something I deviated from my notes here. All right, so how are we going to do this? Um, it's going to look kind of strange, but um, so what we're going to do it will do for V equal to D DQ. And maybe I will explain the general thing here, otherwise this is going to look so strange because this variation is so special, but I, I need the same construction for mixed hard structures where it ain't so, can I, you know, it's not going to look so nice. But you have a natural coordinate and it is Q, of course. Sorry? Yeah. yeah. But, okay, so, so let me just talk about the general situation. So we're going to have, say, a V over the disk with unipotent monodromy. like we do here. We have unipotent monitor given by the nilpotent, you know, the unipotent matrix, you know, called. And then we're going to get V delta over D. That's the corresponding flat bundle. Then we're going to get uh, its canonical extension. And so one of the key features here is that uh, uh, the residue at zero of NABLA is nilpotent and uh, right and, and NABLA has a, a sim I should have put it in the, the reverse order uh, has a regular single point has simple pole at say Q equals zero so in other words, it has a regular singular point, right? So now, the, there are various ways you can think of this. And the way I like to do this is to use the standard old-fashioned ODE. This is, a, this is a good book by Vasov or Wasow. I'm not sure how to say his name. 
but you can always choose a frame. So you can always trivialize this. Uh, so let me name the fiber over zero. So, so V is going to be the fiber over zero. So when I trivialize it, I'm going to trivialize it using the fiber over zero. No, but is it just, you are two different V, sorry. Oh, the, these, these are different fonts. This is blackboard models. This is calligraphic, and this is Roman. This is, this is just an ordinary V. This is script, right? I use script for the, oh, that's a, but this is a blackboard. There's two of those. <clears throat> and so now, um, so, so ODE, and I think this is more or less in Deline's book on differential equations, but it's also, I'd say, CF. You know, you only have to read about three pages in this book. Um, um, there exists a trivialization of V bar. So V bar is going to be isomorphic to D cross V over D, such that the connection, when you've got a trivialization, the connection you can write out more or less as a one form, is equal to N times D Q over Q. And this is constant. And this is, in fact, the residue and it's equal to the residue at zero of nabla. Right? You can always do that. That's the result of ODE. But what does this do for you? So let me draw a picture. Here's the disk. This is V cross the disk. Here we've got our central fiber. And we have some sections, like invariant sections, will extend through. And those with monodromy sort of behave logarithmically. They blow up. You know, they behave badly. But what does it do? It, you know, and let's suppose uh, Q1 is in our disk. So what it'll let? Sorry? You consider the horizontal section of your connection. The consider where you see section, I mean. Horizontal section? Yes, yeah, sorry, yeah, horizontal sections. Yeah, flat sections. So, so what this, but what does this trivialization allow you to do? It allows you to compare the fiber over one to the fiber over zero. Because this is still, this is still V of one, which equals a fiber of V. By the way, I mean, there are the, the technical people think of it I mean, everybody can, we can communicate, they think of it different ways, but I really like to think of it downstairs. They like to think of things on the universal cover, you know, people in the, like Wilfred Schmidt or all these young guys like Paul Stein and so on. Logarithmic singularities. Yeah, but anyway, so what you're going to do is we're going to use this trivialization to put the Q, we're going to take the Q structure here on the point of this disk corresponding to the tangent vector, right? DDQ corresponds to 1. You might say, what happens if 1's not in here? You, you can always do it for sufficiently small tangent vectors, and then, then you get a formula. And I'll show you what the formula is in a second and extend out. But let's not, in, in our case, we'll be able to do this. And this gives you a Q structure. So we, we use the trivialization to transfer. the uh, Q structure, or to, well, to, to get an isomorphism, a linear isomorphism from V1 into V0 equals V. And if this has a Q structure, this is going to give us a Q structure over here. Right? So this is a key thing. And so what we'll do it, in our case, it's going to be absolutely trivial. And, um, and this is, by the way, how I think of regularizing periods. And it's equivalent, I think, to what everyone else does for regularizing periods. Uh, um, 
All right, so let's do it for um, so, so let's do it. Let's take um, V is equal to H. Well, our, our trivialization already has this property. We've got H cross uh, D over D. So H is just going to be C A plus C W. Right? And the connection nabla is equal to D plus A D D W times dq over q. So this is constant. We've already got a Deline trivial, you know, one of these nice trivializations where this is constant. So now let's write out what a, what's the flat structure. So the, um, we know that uh, w was equal to something like minus 2 pi i uh, b plus log Q times W, right? And now we just have to turn it around, uh, sorry, log Q times A. And so what we get is that 2 pi IB is equal to minus W plus log Q times A. Did I do that right? I think so. And now, and now what is, and we're going to use this trivialization. So um, it's just going to amount to setting log Q equal to 0. When you set Q equal to 1, you get rid of the log Q. Right? So um, V, sorry, H of 1 is going to be, it's QA plus QB. That's the, by this I mean the fiber over 1. Right? And the trivialization says that's going to be our structure, right? Because, um, how do I say this? It's, right, and so, but this is actually equal to QA plus Q times W, right? Because at Q equals 1, uh, yeah, where is it? Um, 2 pi i b. Yeah, I have to put a 1, a one over 2 pi i on 1. Is that right? Because it's going, b is, if I said, if this is 0, w over 2 pi i is equal to b, up to a sign. And that, this, this is coming around because we've got, it's really a q of minus 1. Right? So, so this is our q structure on the middle. And so what have we got? We've got, uh, So what's this saying? So it's saying, uh, so what's the mixed Todd structure uh, on, so let me just do H, first of all, associated to D, DQ. Oh, by the way, I should say here, this, um, the Q structure here, this is an important remark, so it's, And this is a little surprising when you look at the construction because you have lots of choices here. The, um, the Q structure on V equals V of 0 depends only on uh, DDQ. In other words, the parameter to first order. If you change the parameter, if you think about it, you use little exercise, you actually change this trivialization. The only way you preserve this trivialization is if you did a silly change of coordinate, like multiplied your coordinate by a constant, right? But if you take any non-trivial change of coordinates, you've got to compute a new trivialization. And when you check everything out, it sounds hard, it's actually easy. Um, you find out that everything depends only on the parameter to first order, right? So. 
here the mixed hard structure on H associated to DDQ is, well, um, we've, we've got HQ now is going to be equal to QA plus uh, QW divided by 2 pi i. And now we've got, and we've got a Hodge filtration, HC is going to be CA plus CW. Uh, and this is going to be our F1. And if you stare at this, you'll see we've got a split Hodge structure. This is saying that H D D Q is equal to Q plus Q of, of minus 1. And that, right, so this is spanned by, the Durham part of this is spanned by W, and I actually made that a Q Durham class, um, which is equal to, and the, the Betty part spanned by B, which is equal to minus W over 2 pi i. And this part spanned by A. And it's split. It's visibly split. So this is a very basic calculation. Um, <clears throat> if you wanted to do a different tangent vector, I, I won't do it. You would replace Q by, if you wanted to you do lambda d, d, dq, just replace the parameter Q by, uh, is it lambda? Lambda over Q. And do the calculation, you, you'll get a non-split extension here. Okay, so there's a question of what to do. Last time, I stopped on time, and then Francis said, oh, you can go longer. <laughs> I figure it's hard to listen for two hours. Let me see what I, I'll let you vote. Uh, yeah, let, I, I'm not going to do, I was going to do limits of mixed hard structures. I've got another 20 pages here. But <laughs> let me just mop up this, and I'll stop limits of hard structures, and next time I'll do limits of mixed hard structures, which is... Um, Oops, I'm erased. Shouldn't have erased that. Okay. So yeah. yeah, and I should say, okay, so I just said that the um, what I call H, when I write H D D Q, I mean the limit mixed Hodge structure associated to that tangent vector. It's Q plus Q of minus one. And this is essentially spanned by W and that by A. And if you look at SN, SNH uh, DDQ, it's just equal to the nth symmetric power of H DDQ. Everything here behaves well under symmetric powers. And this is just going to be Q of 0 plus, plus Q of minus N. And this will be spanned by W to the N this by a to the n, and things in the middle by things like a to the j, uh, w to the n minus j. Right. <clears throat> so th this is also split. Right, and maybe I'll s state this here. Uh, I, I before I do that, I should say, why is this reasonable? I mean, what's going on here? Is this alchemy? Is this L? A ex exponent n minus j and w exponent j. A, A to the j and w to the n minus j. Yes. Yeah. Or no, you want, no, you have to, ex to exchange j to n minus j. Sorry? Well, if you, get, if you want to get something which corresponds to q of minus j. Yeah, you'd put, you'd, you'd, you'd no, take. You'd exchange j and minus j. You'd put A, A to the n minus j. Yeah, yeah. But I cleverly didn't write anything there. So. All right, so is this reasonable? So instead of writing the whole thing, um, so let's, let's look at the universal elliptic curve over the disk. 
Right, so here's how I draw it. So I think of it sort of like this. It's our family here, and here's zero, right? So, um, so this is essentially the Tate curve. And now, um, this total space here, maybe I'll write it as E of D. So basic fact in the topolo uh, topology of varieties is if you include E0, that's the fiber over 0, into ED, this is a homotopy equivalence. It's, it's an elementary, you can just see, you can just squeeze it in, but I, I can give you a rigorous argument. I can give a rigorous argument, lunch. Sorry? Yeah, in this case, it's elementary, you can write it down. But in general, um, there's a little trick. The one I know uses the triangulation of variety. It's a very general fact about degenerations. So, um, but we also have E zero star maybe I'll write NS, meaning the non-singular part, is this is isomorphic to C star. That's the smooth locus of the nodal cubic, right? And so what we have is that E zero non-singular includes into E, hold on. Yeah, I want to say this includes into EDDQ, and I'll explain what I, how I think of this guy. And then this guy maps into ED, which is homotopy equivalent to E0. So just suspend belief for a second and pretend there is this fiber that's, and it's easier actually to write this down in the etale situation. So this is a C star, and this is equal to P1, mod zero identified with infinity. <coughs> Excuse me. And here, um, let's look at just H lower one, or H upper one. We can do it either way. Let's look at H upper one of E zero. It's equal to a Q, or it's actually even equal to a Z of zero. Let me do all of this integrally. <coughs> you can imagine I mean, it's the general construction of mixed Hodge structures, but basically this class is coming through, passing through a point, which has type 0, 0. And then we're going to get a map here into H1 of E, D, D, Q. And then there's going to be a restriction map into H1 of C star, which is equal to Z of minus 1. So in the limit, you think this guy should be an extension of this guy by z of 0. That's just a heuristic reason. But this is actually a property of the limit mixed Hodge structure that is compatible with all of these things. You know, it's built essentially on the singular fiber. You're sort of backing off infinitesimally. And maybe the last thing I'll say before lunch is I'll tell you how I think of the fiber over DDQ. So <coughs> how do I think of this? So it, and this is probably related to log schemes. I don't, I'm too old to know about log schemes. So, um, If we looked at, so I want to say, how can we describe the fiber over DDQ? So this is, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the real oriented blow up at um, 0 and infinity of P1. Mm -hmm. And what is that? That's just really equal to um, the real oriented blow up, so which I discussed last time, is like this. Here's infinity and zero, and I've replaced them both by the circle of directions. So you have the A minus three and you blow up two points. Yeah, and the real oriented thing. And now I'm thinking here, instead of doing this, suppose I have a tangent vector here. So the Hessian gives you a map from the tensor product of the tangent space down here to the tangent space here. So what you can do is over the, so I'm going to take also the disk blowing up at the origin. That's this here. And now I'm going to, so here's the disk 
the real oriented blow up. So every point on this circle corresponds to the origin, but they tell me all the different directions. And now how am I going to construct the fiber over, over DDQ? So DDQ actually has a length, but actually arithmetically this picture is okay because we can't double or triple the length of this, otherwise we'd have bad reduction at wherever. So we, we don't have much choice. But anyway, and, and um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to identify the two ends of this and over, say, e to the i theta times this, I'm just going to put a rotation by theta in. And you can see that c star includes into this. It's everything except this circle. And you can see it also maps to e0. How do I get e0? I just collapse the circle. And I actually wrote down the equations for this and proved that you get a nice family here. I mean, it works for stable families of curves. But I wrote it out at the end of these elliptic KZB. It's some manuscript where I park all sorts of stuff that I don't want to put in papers. But I think it should be out there. So I'll stop there. So I think of the limit mixed hot structure as being on this guy. <coughs> so I'll stop.